Hello everybody. In just a moment, I am going to call former Oakland Mayor and former Peralta Community College Chancellor Elihu Harris to talk about the Oakland Athletic Stadium situation and their desire to locate their next stadium at, that's right, at Laney College, the Laney College ball fields. This is promises to be another great conversation, not one of many I've had with Elihu, so I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm just going to take a little bit of time to calibrate the page and then get started. I'm going to restart the browser. Hello, everybody. All two of you so far <laughs> that are here. And in just one moment, as soon as I can get Firefox to stop or quit, and it's not doing that as fast as I want, let me try something. I will be ready. And okay, force quit. Here we go. Firefox force quit. There it is, and I'll restart. All right. And there we go. Hey, Octavio, Barry Lee, how are you? Tweets it. Thank you very, very much. How's the sound? How is the sound? I don't have my microphone. How is the sound? Is that... <clears throat> it's, looks like you guys went away. It, it's weird, this, this, this view counter here. It reports that you're here, and then you're not here. Oh, sounds good? That's good. Barry Lee is great. Yeah, it's really weird. Okay, Octavio, are you still here? Thank you. Harry, how are you? How are you, Harry? Great to have you here, Harry. Octavio. Uh, okay. All right, so Barry Lee says the sound is great. Octavio says not. You know what? That means I'm, that means it's better than, better than not. Okay, so I've got to go with, I've got to do this. I've got to go without the mic. So there we go. And I'm about to do that. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to turn up the volume. See, now it says no. nobody's watching. This is really weird. I get this. Harry Dunn says, Peralta is the answer. Build downtown Oakland. How's the sound, Harry? How is the sound? I'm about to call LU right now. And glad you're here, Harry. And did I get... Um, Harry Dunn says the sound is good. So, Octavio, you're outnumbered. <laughs> they say the sound is good, therefore the sound is great. All right. So, we are about to get started. It is 11.32. Hey, Donis, how are you? And let's see here. Great to have you here. But, and it's great to have you here. So, the stream status is good. And we're going to view on the watch page. All right, and I'm going to tweet this out right now and share right like so. And here we go. I'm going to Laney College. I am a, a li little bit late calling Elihu, but I want to make sure hashtag Oakland. I get this out. Okay. All right. Got it. All right. So that's out. Hey, Barry, could you tweet one more time, but hashtag MLB, please? Hashtag MLB. MLB. Thank you. All right. Cool. Excuse me. All right. Oh, boy. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's do it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. All right. One more, one more bid for king and country that I do while I'm calibrating this. And that is to go here, and I'll go here, go here, and then go to sports, and then save the changes, and then go back to the watch page, and then tweet this out one more time. But to let A's people know, share. Hear that? There we go. Skype open. Cancel. All right. They need college. Laney College, college, and then hashtag Oakland Athletics, got it, all right, now, okay folks, welcome to Zenny 62 live, 
and I am right now going to call former Oakland mayor and former Peralta Community College Chancellor and my boss, former boss, L. Hugh Harris, right now. So this is going to, going to make it happen. It's Zinning. Yeah, he's in. How's it going? Everything's good. All right, cool. We are we're live, folks. We're live with. I was calling my boss, and mainly because I learned a lot from him, and I work for him, and he's my friend. Former Oakland mayor. Well, I appreciate and, all that. Thank God, you. God, hey, I appreciate all you've done for me. Uh, former Oakland mayor and former Paulson Community College District Chancellor L. U. Harris, and I'm gonna get right to the cut to the chase because your information and your experience is more valuable than anybody I can think of, frankly, because you were there, you know, and you were, and when I say you were there, Elihu, you were chancellor when the idea came up regarding having a ballpark at Laney College, even though I don't think it ever came before your board, but can you uh, talk about from your end what was going on then and that how people received what was just an idea at the time when you were a chancellor? Well, I think whenever you start talking about moving anything that's going to affect people or businesses or, uh, or, any, or transportation, um, you're talking about controversy. And there are a lot of people, when they had the idea of, uh, it, it, at one time it was Kaiser moving the world headquarters to the Laney Athletic Field, another time, of course, it was uh, the A's moving there. Uh, there was a lot of uh, anger, and at the, at the, even the concept of moving a, um, a, uh, a baseball team to that area. But in that particular case, uh, they were ta uh, there was never a proposal, as far as I can remember, that actually talked about the district office space, which is basically uh, between the freeway and Fifth Avenue, I'm sorry, East, East 8th Street uh, in Oakland. And I think that uh, this proposal is different in that regard. And one would think there'd be less resistance to it simply because it is space that is not um, uh, in use for any uh, major public purpose, primary administrative space that obviously could be uh, located almost anywhere. Hey, I want to talk a little less. Uh, let me pose this question a different way. Can you explain to people what the community college, Peralta Community College Board does? Because there's a lot of people here who listen who are interested in the A's, but they don't even live in Oakland mm -hmm. and have never even visited Oakland, you know? Sure. So, um, well, the community college district is uh, basically northern Alameda County uh, Albany, Berkeley, Piedmont, Oakland, uh, Alameda, Emeryville. And uh, it uh, is about 750,000 people, more or less, and about uh, 45,000 students. And there's a, uh, a community college, basically, that offers a BA, uh, so AA degrees. Ultimately, they hope to offer BA degrees, the current is AA degrees, and both in academic and technical fields, those that help students to transfer to four-year schools, and certainly those that uh, uh, would prepare people for immediate entry into the workplace. And the Peralta Community College Board is elected, right? It's not. There are seven board members uh, that are uh, both are elected from seven districts within that area of probably about a hundred and some odd thousand for each of the uh, seven members of the board. And when you, what do you think about where the A should go? Because Barry Lee asked me, he says, "What did you? What does he think of of the Howard Terminal site?" What did you think, because you have a long history with this, what, do you, what would you have liked the A's to have done, and what do you see that they should do, you know, as we talk about it? I mean, ideally they stay where they are. I mean, that is probably the best spot uh, in, in the, certainly the East Bay, if not the entire Bay Area, in terms of logistics. Uh, you have a barge station there, you've got great freeway access, you've got open space uh, that is currently uh, not in conflict with any other uh economic development plan. Uh, I think there are probably better uses for the land even than a baseball stadium, uh, but certainly a baseball stadium works there as it has for the last 60-some odd years. Uh, what, 
why do you think about why they would choose Laney College as opposed to Howard Terminal? I, I'm well, still trying to know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's easy. But it, it, lately, it's been in vogue moving uh, baseball stadiums to downtown areas, whether it's Camden Yards in, 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 in uh, Baltimore or certainly the Comiskey Park in Chicago and AT&T in San Francisco and on and on, both because it's close to the business community and also because uh, it's uh, you know, considered to be you know, a little more neighborhood friendly and the like. So I think there's certainly been a history of ballparks being located in and around downtown areas. And yet the A's picked a place that has, a, how would I say it, has a kind of a buzzsaw of political controversy mm-hmm. around it, I mean, with respect to this proposal. I had Shirley G mm-hmm. on, who you and I both know, mm-hmm. last night. And mm-hmm. Shirley kind of... Uh, uh, Shirley compared the athletics to Donald Trump. And then she turned around and uh, said that this was a, a, a cultural takeover. And is she mm-hmm. off base? What do you think about that, that, that point of view? Well, I think that's an exaggeration. Uh, people feel uh, emotionally about these issues, and those who are most impacted feel the most emotionally. And, and I think certainly uh, the closer you are to the proposed site, the more you're logically going to be impacted by traffic uh, and, and certainly by noise um, and, and certainly by the, uh, people invading your area for parking purposes. So I think there's reason for people in the neighborhood to be concerned. Whether or not those concerns can be ameliorated or mitigated, I think it's certainly a major issue. Uh, but I do think that certainly you at least want to keep it within reasonable bounds and not be to the point where you are so uh, excited by the prospect that you lose uh, any sense of reality. Oh, for Christ's sakes, I just have to uh, programming note, folks. CNN yeah. is reporting that, I'm not going anywhere, but just CNN is reporting that the uh, that Kim Jong-un is threatening to explode a hydrogen bomb over the Pacific Ocean. Just a programming note. Um, world's getting crazy, all of you. I mean, <laughs> it's, already, it's already crazy. Man. But the problem is, we have we have crazy people running governments now, as opposed to just crazy people in countries. Now they're in charge of countries. Yeah, I never thought I'd live the day where I see something like that pop up in my mm-hmm. in my newsfeed. But I digress. I had to I had to say yeah. that because that was kind of like, huh? Mm-hmm. What? Are you kidding me? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, back no, to the fun. I mean, wish you were kidding, then, but you're not. No, I'm not. No. Uh, well, back to the fun, comparative fun of talking about politics in Oakland and sports. <laughs> when you, sure. when you were mayor, which was from 1991 to 1999, uh, I believe the Haas family owned the, the athletics at the time, right? For most of that time, basically until uh, uh, Hoffman is shot. I bought the team from them. And we worked with uh, Walter Hobbs, who's really a great community a participant, who made sure that, uh, that whoever bought the A's was going to have to actually commit to keeping them in Oakland. We haven't had that kind of ownership of any uh, sports teams in Oakland for many years, and I'm not sure there are any real exceptions to that. And did they also talk about at a new stadium at any point? Or were they always just folk coliseum focused? No, they, 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 they were focused pretty much on uh, delivering a quality product out of uh, the existing facility. As you remember, they were winning championships certainly in 89, uh, and they had competitive teams until Walter Haas uh, died, and they really had an estate issue because he had multiple heirs, and they couldn't agree on who was going to get the aim, so they decided they would sell it and divide up the proceeds among themselves. And that's where Sean Hoffman came in, right? Right. How would you carry and they, gave, and, they gave, and they gave them a heavy discount in order for them to keep it in Oakland. Is that right? Tell me about that. Tell us about that, please. Well, they said, they said we'll sell the team to uh, an investor for, I think, $75 million, which was at least $25 million um, less than the team was worth if they were committed to keeping it in Oakland. Hmm. And I remember, that was a stipulation. And I remember the lease, somehow, it, it fell to us as East Bay entities to find an, an owner you have to keep the team in Oakland. If well, that, that was that was all. Oh, that was when Hoffman and Shot wanted to sell the team. Ah, okay, okay. And that was around what 1996 when they were talking about either 96, 97 around in there. Yeah, movie. They never seemed to want to be in Oakland, did they? Well, they were in these basic uh, Santa Clara County. They were suburban guys who ran um, 
housing developments in places like Discovery Bay. And they never really had a commitment to Oakland. They didn't live, live in Oakland, and they certainly uh, had no political or economic base in Oakland. Now, uh, Barry Lee is asking a question. I think I know the answer to read pretty well. He's asking, is there going to be taxpayer funds to build a stadium? If so, what tax income increases may pros? I'll, I'll take that one, Barry. Uh, there has not, the way he's stated, David Cobble, the president, stated he's going to use private financing. However, he did mention the desire to use what are called enhanced redevelopment zone, I believe, however that new piece of California legislation is termed, uh, to create a kind of redevelopment area around Laney College. And on that note, too, can you give us a flavor for um, the players in Laney College. Like, I, Carl Chan, I've known for years, and I meant to call him and get him on the show. And Shirley G made some, I thought, comments about him that were unkind, which I'm not going to repeat here, but I just let her, you know, go on. But uh, and, and I'm saying that mindful of the fact that she may hear this, but I said the other night, Carl Chan's a friend of mine. Uh, talk about his contributions to Chinatown. And I, I know the A's reached out to him. Is he the right person to get the job done, you think, in terms of politically marching well, this through? Carl, Carl Chan is a, has been a longtime business advocate for the Chinese Chamber of Commerce and for the greater Chinese community. Uh, he's been certainly one of the strongest and most visible leaders in Chinatown for certainly the last 20 years. Um, and, and certainly I think he has always had an interest. But again, his interest is that tilted toward the business side of it, not just the grassroots side of them, other pol more political groups that have perhaps a little bit different perspective, either, even than uh, Carl Chan. But I would say that Carl certainly has been a, a, an advocate for the uh, greater uh, Oakland area and Chinatown in particular. So this is very much a battle of... It's, it's seems like it's shaping up to be a battle of business, or the haves versus the have-nots. Is that... Well, I don't think it's that simple. I mean, okay. there are many people who work uh, at, for the A's, part-time jobs, as ushers, as security, and the like. Um, uh, look, sports teams uh, are always have both an economic value and an aesthetic value as uh, assets that help define communities and say, hey, you know, for an urban area uh, like Oakland, yeah, we are... Uh, uh, a real major league city. We have a major league team. To lose the A's uh, as we have with the Warriors and the and presumably the, the Raiders would basically make Oakland not a major league city. I mean, even a city like San Jose with its Silicon Valley uh, ached for a major league team, in, in this case hockey, Sacramento with the Kings. They fought to maintain the Kings. The Sacramento is a very large city by most standards, but it didn't have a major league Harris and former Oakland Mayor Elihu Harris, who has uh, served as he was also a former California Assemblyman Elihu Harris. Hey, when did you first get into politics? I want people to get a better idea of your your full background because they'll know you like bits well, and pieces and here yeah, there, you know. Sure. I, I got a specific in politics. I graduated from law school, and went on the staff of Assemblyman John Miller, and then I went to Washington and got on the staff of Congresswoman Yvonne Burke, and uh, then came back. When John Miller was appointed to the uh, State Court of Appeals and ran for the uh, the legislature and was elected when I was 29 years old. Were you the youngest to get elected? At the time. Wow. I mean, uh, so well, who's beat your record? Um, the guy named Sebastian Ridley Thomas, whose father was in the Senate, but he got elected like at 27. Wow. Wow. That's pretty young. And mm -hmm. over time, how is from your perspective, how do you think politics in California have changed? Well, I think it's certainly become more partisan. 
I think it's become more divisive. Um, uh, I, I think that in many ways uh, we have lost a, since a long-term strategy. Uh, we haven't had a master plan for higher education since Pat Brown was the uh, governor in the 50s. We haven't had a master plan for our transportation system, our highway system since then. So I think there really has been a, a lack of long-term planning, not just in Oakland and the Bay Area, but in the state. And the thing has resulted in become much more reactionary around our development plans, whether it's in housing and affordable housing and that, uh, creating jobs that are going to be relatively close to where people live and work. And there are a lot of different issues that I think uh, have changed over the years. Uh, our schools certainly funding has deteriorated for our school system. Uh, we have much higher crack crime, many more people in prison. There are a lot of things, I don't think necessarily for the good, that have happened over the last uh, few, uh, few decades. Is that to say that California is on a decline? No, California is not on the decline, at least in terms of its economy. We're still the sixth largest economy in the world, uh, something to be proud of. But I do think we are not as focused on the future as we were. Uh, and, th- and that could ultimately lead to a decline. So I think you have to be willing to sacrifice for your children for succeeding generations. And if you aren't willing to do that, there are consequences and repercussions. Well said. Barry Lee has another question. He asks, what do you think should be done with the uh, Oracle Arena once the Warriors go over to, to Chase Center in San Francisco's Mission Bay? I mean, I'll be maintained. Uh, it's very difficult to replace an arena. Uh, once you tear it down, it probably will not be replaced. It will be without an arena in, uh, in Oakland. And I think that whether you want to have uh, events like circuses or uh, concerts or whatever, we shouldn't have to go to San Francisco for every entertainment, uh, the, the venues, entertainment, Amen. and the like. And, <laughs> I, and, and I just think, I think we have to have the pride in our community to have facilities where, you know, large numbers of people can come, recreate, uh, without having to cross the bridge for everything related to entertainment. It's interesting you say that because I remember when I had my Oakland Sports Forum event on October 7th of 2014, where we had 14 of the 15 mayor candidates running. Oakland, now Oakland mayor and then Oakland council member Libby Schaff stated openly that she was going to sue the Golden State Warriors over their attempt to move to San Francisco. She said, mm-hmm. and I have that on video. Then she backed mm-hmm. off. Then at the Oakland Raiders town hall, two days before the decision on Las Vegas, she, she praised the Warriors for keeping their team in the region to a smattering of booze. Actually, it wasn't a smattering. It was more than that. What's going on where it seems like we have no problem giving up our precious sports, you know, team representatives, our precious sports resources to other cities and not really putting up a fight? Or am I wrong? Well, I don't know if you have to a fight, but you have to care, first of all. And you have to work uh, with ownership and with others uh, if you want to keep major league sports in your city, now obviously the price can be too high. You have to say, look, hey, you know, we really want to keep you, but if you're determined you're going to leave and we can't stop you legally, uh, we certainly are going to try to stop you financially and giving away the city to a, to a business owner. And, and again, professional sports are businesses. Um, but I do think that you want to try to attract owners like Walter Hobbs who have a commitment to the community and who aren't just trying to make a buck. I mean, in the case of the Warriors, for example, that's a major asset of the uh, uh, of the family. And and uh, when Al Davis died, uh, his major the major inheritance uh, to his family was the Raiders. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, as a result, uh, their interest in is less in the city and much more in uh, the economic base the Raiders represents for their family. And uh, they don't have a lot of disposable cash. All the money they have, as I said earlier, is in the ownership of the Raiders. So I think that that's a different situation than most people encounter when they're dealing with an owner who simply um, wants a location for a team and is willing to pay in order to get that location. And we see that with Jerry Jones in, uh, uh, in, in, in Texas, and we see with other owners who quite frankly just say, look, you know, I want to, I see a new stadium, and I'm going to show up the bucks to get it. And Corey Brown just entered, he says, uh, just getting in, uh, does Mr. Harris also think the Vegas deal is a bad one? That's Corey Brown's question. I think it's bad for the Raiders, yeah. But there's no fan base. The, the Raiders came back to Oakland uh, because he didn't have a fan base in L.A. When you're drawing, drawing 35 
40,000 people in Los Angeles, uh, it's hard to qualify that as success. And Al Davis is not, nobody's dummy. Uh, he came back to Oakland because it made economic sense to him to do that. And quite frankly, uh, I think that they're making a very big mistake in moving to uh, Las Vegas. Las Vegas is a, a touristy town. Uh, people are not going to, in Las Vegas, work in the hospitality industry. They're not going to get up every Sunday morning after working all week and, and, and go. There's so many other things to do. And everybody else is coming in and out of town. You know, I think that they should learn the lesson from L.A. Do not abandon your fan base. Fan bases are hard to replace. And if you try to move somewhere thinking your fans are going to follow you, that's idiotic. People from, I would prefer the people from Oakland go to Vegas every two weeks for a football game, then they're idiotic, and the Raiders have to have the upper hand in terms of intelligence. But I think they're wrong. I think they're betting uh, on a horse that's not going to come in. I don't think people are going to go in mass to Vegas. I don't think people in Vegas are in mass for the Raiders game. I think it's a big mistake. And if you were mayor, wait, let me ask you this question. Elihu, could you run for mayor again? I think you can. I, I I could have lost my mind, but <laughs> that kind of like to happen. <laughs> because I understand Ignacio's talking about running. What do you think about Ignacio mm. possibly running? You you served with him, and he was council president. And you were mayor, and I was your economic advisor. And we got a lot of sure. we got a lot of stories about Ignacio. What do you think about Ignacio yeah, running yeah. for mayor? Um, I think Ignacio is aggressive. I think he's prepared to offer uh, a, a certain kind of leadership. And the real question is not. What Ignacio brings, but you know, sometimes you've been off the scene a little bit too long, and, and even though you may have the desire, uh, it's very hard to come back once you've left. And I just don't know the answer to that question. Uh, the voters will have to decide that if Ignacio decides to re enter the fray. But I think it's very challenging to get out of the game for uh, the length of time he's been off the city council and get back here. And then you can't do it, but I think it's a challenge. Hey, wasn't there, and I'm talking, we're, we're talking with uh, former Oakland mayor, former California assemblyman, and f former Puerto Community College Chancellor, Hugh Harris, wasn't there at one point, I mean, go reaching back to, I don't know if this is the early or mid-90s, was there a thought of actually bringing the Warriors downtown? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I had a proposal to put the Warriors uh, directly behind the, uh, what is now the Marriott Hotel, uh, I thought that it would be a boon to downtown. I thought it would be very uh, helpful to review parking all over the city, which for the most part was not being used in the evening or on weekends. Uh, I think it would have helped to uh, create both nightlife. Uh, I think it would have helped to create uh, an atmosphere that would have been conducive to economic development uh, as AT&T has been uh, in the south of Market in San Francisco and probably the Warriors will be to that area. Uh, in, uh, in in future years, so yeah, I, I definitely made that proposal, and uh, uh, the uh, owner, the leadership at the Oakland Coliseum fought it primarily, I think, because they didn't want to lose the power they perceived that they had. These were all non-elected officials, and I think they were unwilling to uh, give up the power. They told uh, uh, Dan and and Fitzgerald that downtown Oakland wasn't safe, and the only safe place in Oakland to be was at the Coliseum, oh, and they no. backed out of that deal. Oh my God! So that was, so wait a minute. So basically, George Vukasin punked you. I mean, punked the. No, that... he didn't punk. No, he didn't punk me. I didn't punk the city. <laughs> I mean, that was wrong, though. I mean, is that? I, I would have. No, we had, we had all we had, no, we had all the studies indicating. First of all, you would have be able to go into the new stadium right from the downtown bar station underground. You didn't even have to come up uh, come up for air. Hmm. Uh, the idea, I think, of that stadium would have been great, again, both for economic development and logistics, uh, and it made more sense in trying to rebuild uh, the uh, stadium at the um, less existing site. But, again, uh, we weren't doing it because we were trying to kick them away from the, uh, the, the area uh, uh, Coliseum. It was because they wanted to do stadium. They were threatening to go to uh, Shadow Bay. Did, was, was it that episode that contributed to what eventually became a stripping of the Coliseum Board's power in 1996? Well, I, I think a lot of it came about as of dissatisfaction with the negotiation to bring the Warriors uh, back from L.A. Uh, as you know, it was a financial, uh, uh, I won't say mistake, but certainly a, a major uh, challenge for the city to try to uh, 
keep uh, the uh, 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 pay for the stadium mm-hmm. and pay for the, the, the Warriors' return because there are kind of uh, issues mm-hmm. that had come up. It was negotiated again, not by the uh, city, but rather by the uh, city administrator. And the city administrator cut a deal whereby they were, they were going to depend one on PSAs, which did not materialize as, as the financial uh, uh, source that had been uh, uh, they'd been represented to be. But secondly, perhaps even more importantly, uh, there was the issue of the uh, uh, the bonds and whether or not they were going to be backed by the government or backed by the um, uh, by the, by the uh, revenue just revenue bonds for which the city would not be liable. And I think all those are the kind of things that, in retrospect, the retrospect were not good negotiations for the people of Oakland. Uh, although we wanted the, um, the, the we wanted the Raiders back, I don't think we wanted it at any cost. I think that became the real uh, issue so that's moving in, forward. So that's interesting. You're saying that it was basically the Coliseum board, and with Ezra Rapport at the time, if I'm not mistaken, who is and right, and who was the but, chief? Nego- it, was he the chief negotiator? Right. right? It, it, Right. Ezra, Ezra, Ezra was appointed by the city manager. Remember, at that point, we had a city manager, former government, mm-hmm. and the city manager uh, appointed Ezra as the city's representative. And ultimately, the mayor of the city council uh, simply had the option of voting up or down. And I think in some ways, we took the bait because the idea of losing the Raiders again uh, seemed to be unfathomable, although in mental state, maybe it wasn't as bad as we thought. Barry Lee asks, what do you think should be done with the Coliseum uh, if the Raiders leave? Kind of an outgrowth of the other, of Corey Brown's question regarding sure, the Oracle. Sure. Well, I'd be a two, two major opportunities. One would be that you take the uh, uh, the Coliseum and turn it into a kind of L.A. Live venue mm-hmm. uh, where you'd have hotels, convention centers, um, nightlife uh, activities, and probably based around the arena, similar, similar to what Los Angeles has done with Staples Center and the uh, convention center in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. including that as a, a, a activity venue, um, and, and surround that with a certain level of housing, uh, and luxury housing and affordable housing that would perhaps house any five to 10,000 people with big broad access and great airport access. The other alternative would be that you turn it into a, some type of a campus for a high tech or similar kind of a firm, maybe even a, a firm like uh, Amazon, mm-hmm. uh, where you'd be able to have a, uh, again, housing and, and lifestyle and living uh, and working environment that would really be uh, a model. And I think those are the kind of things that we should be thinking about if the, uh, uh, if, if, particularly if the uh, 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 arena is torn down, but even if it's not, I think those kind of uses make sense. Why is it that we have a convention center? I'm just, I'm, I feel I feel a duty to to come to you with these questions because you have a, a valuable and I, I have to say wholly untapped okay uh, font of experience and observations regarding Oakland and its past and what its present should, is and what its future should be. But our convention center is what barely 150,000 square feet, something like that. Was it ever supposed to be bigger? Why are we leaping along with just a, such a small convention center, and yet Moscone Center is expanding, and right. you know all the other cities around us are actually taking advantage mm-hmm. of what's called the mice industry, you know, which is uh, sure. you know meetings and incentives, uh, mm-hmm. conventions and and events. Why is it that we are behind on that, and why don't we have a convention center that captures something right. of the market that's going on here? What's going on, in your view? A, a lack of foresight. Uh, there was a decision made, and it was not made by any individual, but collectively, I would say, uh, back in the 60s and 70s, that uh, as part of the redevelopment of downtown, they were going to build a magnificent hotel, in that case, the Hyatt Regency, which would uh, be backed by a convention center. And you got a 450, uh, 500 room hotel with a convention center that wouldn't take more than 2,000 delegates. With no other hotels being built or planned, uh, certainly with the convention center that was not designed to do anything beyond regional conventions, it was just too small. And when they started moving uh, conventions to uh, San Francisco and San Jose and L.A. and even Sacramento, we built a much bigger convention center, then there was no land to build a new one. Uh, there was no uh, economic capacity or at least will to build a new one. And it was just, it, it just turned out to be not a great idea. It has been, uh, quite frankly, an economic burden on the city rather than an economic benefit. Uh, and it's sad because I think that Oakland oh, certainly could have built a modern and incredible.
incredible uh, convention center, probably out by the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. and they've done it at the, at the early days of the Coliseum and created, again, an entire entertainment venue that would have brought people from out of the area with access to the airport, with bar access, uh, and all the rest. Uh, but it didn't happen, and, you know, uh, we can look back in hindsight 2020, but I think it was a mistake. Knowing that the Rays are leaving the Coliseum property... Well, they may not be, they may not be leaving the Coliseum. I don't think that's a, a, a conclusion we should reach. Okay. Because, you know, quite frankly, there are a lot of, of, of issues in moving, this, moving to the existing uh, uh, district office site for the Browse Community College, not the least of which is transportation. You know, anybody who knows the area knows trying to get off of 880 there or back on the 880 there or filter through the neighborhood to get to 580 is an incredibly challenging task. Yeah. I don't know how you create the infrastructure. I don't know how you create the access to be able to take that level of traffic through those neighborhoods. They're going to have to answer that question, not just the satisfaction of the neighbors, but to meet the requirements of an EIR. Why would the A's... And we talked about this on the phone, but I think people should hear your answer. Why did the A's make a mistake in how they handled this? I mean, my my assertion is that Cabal made a mistake and he should have worked with the community and then come out with, you know, the land announcement. But you have a different take that I think is is quite valuable for us, others to hear. What what do you think about that? I think I get the ball rolling. I think he's done that. He's put he put the put the, the issue really before uh, the public. Uh, I think you either gotta jump in the water or stay out. I don't think there's really a whole lot of options. In this particular case, he has said, look, here's where we like to build a stadium. We're not gonna sit there and, and, and try to argue about who's gonna pay for it. Our money's good. We're ready to make a commitment. We found a spot. Uh, if you don't think it makes sense, you know, come up with an alternative or, you know, or, or, or support us or stop backing off of us moving out of the area because, you know, we've got limited options in a developed city like Oakland, where are we going to go? You know, give us an option. Uh, I think, for example, Robert Todd had a great option with Uptown. I think that was a good option at the time. Uh, it, it, I think it was a perfect option, but certainly it's worth consideration. Uh, you know, so as time goes forward, uh, you have fewer and fewer places that you can actually build uh, baseball stadiums, which takes, you know, uh, 15 to 20 acres of land. And the other thing people haven't looked at about the uh, Parappa site is that you have all the Union Pacific land right across the street. Ah, that's right. I didn't think about that. You're right. And, but and do you know how much that costs to acquire? Or is that, can we still do that with, we can still do that with them in a domain, I think. If well, we... they, yeah, I mean, they want to buy it as an option. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying whether they should or shouldn't. Mm -hmm. But there is additional land that is not the only land in the area. It's not just 13 acres. Actually, it's more acres than that. And I think that people should look at it from the standpoint of, of okay, what is, the, what, is the, what is the long term economic development of that area? What is going to happen? You've got great BART access. You can walk from BART over to that particular site. Uh, there are many things that I think I'll go into that consideration besides just, you know, are you for it or against it? But whether or not, in fact, uh, it is a, uh, a risk uh, that is worth uh, taking from the standpoint of the city certainly to detriment, and there will be detriments to people in the immediate neighborhood, but there's always sacrifice when you're doing something. And, and, and you, you, you might be able to create a win-win, you hope you can create a win-win, but you also have to look at, is this, or let me put it this way, is the juice worth the squeeze? <laughs> is the juice worth the squeeze? <laughs> mm -hmm. and, oh, so, in fact, speaking of juicing and squeezing, we have another question, Corey Brown. Uh, first, Gabriel Lee asks, what do you think about the idea of leasing the Coliseum to a company like LA Live or selling it? I mean, anything makes sense is you're going to create jobs and you're going to create revenue. Uh, you have to look at it. Uh, it's too valuable not to look at the highest and best use. I don't know that we know what that is at this point, but I do think you have to explore that. And if a long-term lease that's going to bring in jobs and revenue is offered and under consideration, I think you got to look at it. Now, Corey Brown asks, was the old Oakland Army base ever considered as a location for a pro sports facility? Absolutely, but the city abandoned it, uh, and I'm not uh, Kathy Aspersion, but Jerry Brown didn't want to do that. That was one of the original ideas. You could build uh, a major uh, 
shopping center. Uh, you can build a number of other uh, job-related facilities, commercial centers, all in row on that site. But there was a decision made, and it took a long time. Remember, this is a 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. that it would be developed as a commercial center, uh, and, and, and rather than as a uh, uh, as a freight center. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was abandoned. Uh, and, and after I guess some further consideration, after I left uh, the mayor's office, and, and quite frankly, we're still in a kind of still limbo in terms of. Uh, what's going to happen there, all those decisions that make this going to be a, uh, a fleet, uh, center. I think that's, uh, you know, that we, that we crossed that bridge, but I do think that at the time, that would have been a very, very good use for it, but, uh, we never got to that point because it was abandoned in the next administration. Was Jerry just anti-sports? I mean, I, my impression is that he has a weird idea, and I did say the term mm -hmm. weird, I should have said weird, I should have said, e an idea. A lot, a lot, a lot, I, 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 I had, I'm not uh, obviously at all angry with the uh, with, with the governor, but there are a lot of people who use the word weird about Jerry Brown. You <laughs> just feel like you got some kind of right on that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I just felt that he hated sports. You know, I, I, I it was. He's not a sports fan. He's not a sports fan. I don't, I don't even know that he went to many of the games uh, of any of our teams when he was the mayor. And again, I think that's just the reality. I, that's not a, a condemnation or criticism. He, he's just not a big sports guy. But well, what about recognizing sports as part of what makes a healthy city healthy? You know, having fun things um, to do, watch, that sort of thing. I, 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 would, I would argue that I think he saw that, but I don't think it was part of his highlight film. <laughs> I, I, he always has the, I, always, I call it the quip of the moment. That was the quip of the moment for attached to the current governor and another former boss of mine jerry brown but uh continuing on uh we've got let me scroll down here because now we've got a uh oh and uh more people coming in here oh i'll ask this question which has also been burning on my mind what what happened in your mind when between you brought you brought in robert bob how did in fact you know that's a question that I've always wanted to ask, how did Robert Bob wind up getting hired as our city manager before he became city administrator? Well, he did a national search. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, he was the city manager of Richmond, Virginia. Had a great reputation as the innovator, uh, as someone who was a strong leader, uh, who was willing to engage in change uh, of a bureaucracy. And there was a sense that he would invigorate and drive uh, the uh, open bureaucracy. Uh, and that was certainly a primary consideration in his being uh, selected as the uh, as, as the mayor. Uh, and I think to a great extent uh, he was he was strong. And he, 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 remember, he left here, became city administrator of the District of Columbia. So obviously there were many who believed that he had done a good job in Oakland, despite the fact that he didn't always have uh, the, uh, uh, the support of the mayor. And the mayor, quite frankly, uh, uh, opposed. Some of the things that Robert wanted to do, including the uh, A Stadium. Do you think or the that, A facility at Uptown? Do you think that Robert should have been given a second chance to really do that? Did was Jerry unnecessarily heavy-handed? No, but I think that you don't. I don't think you necessarily fire people because they have competing ideas. Uh, I mean, I think that in some ways, I think that Jerry forced Robert out because he didn't go along with his program. And, uh, and, and, and and that's really, as a strong mayor form of system, I think that was the, his right to do that. Uh, I'm not sure that in that particular case uh, that Robert was wrong and the jury was right. But that, I'll leave that to others to, to determine as to whether or not uh, they should have built that ballpark at the uh, at, at the uptown site, which is now you know a really successful housing development, mm -hmm. and I think that certain people think something people can argue about. But I don't think it was a bad location, and I think that while the decision ultimately was the mayor and the council, I think Robert Bob's responsibility. I think he did was to give them the option of a facility that would work. Now, as I understand, that would work. now as I understand it from a number of people, Forest City was promised a seventy million dollar profit. To put an apartment complex at Uptown instead of that, instead of baseball, and I, do I have that right? Um, that, that's my understanding. They were they, they were given a seventy million dollar profit up front to, uh, to to build Uptown. Uh, that's kind of unprecedented. Uh, I won't argue the merits of it, but that's my understanding of it. Wow, that's horrible. I mean, horrible in that it it seemed like 
because I gave the presentation to Forest City, as you remember, that brought them to Oakland. But I got the impression, maybe it's my arrogance, that the whole deal was stolen out from under me by Jerry. Am I wrong? That uh, doesn't sound like it. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> it's like, yeah. ouch. Uh, yeah. it's, it seems like there's so many places where Oakland was has been on the precipice of being great. And yet, mm-hmm. from one place or another, it seems like we never quite get there. Will Oakland ever get out of San Francisco's shadow in a way that we've all desired? Well, I don't necessarily want to be out of San Francisco's shadow. I like Oakland as a town. Uh, I like the fact that Oakland is a, uh, is a, a city, uh, more like a town than a city where people actually know each other. Uh, there's a sense of neighborhood. Uh, you know, it's not flash and dash. It's more muscle and, 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 and brawn. Uh, it's a, I think it's the heart of the Bay uh, where people actually live and recreate and work. Uh, I don't apologize for that. I like that about Oakland. And I would suggest that for those who don't like it, well, I, I understand. Big move to San Francisco pay a higher risk. <laughs> We're already sky high in Oakland. Uh, but I think we lost a little bit of our soul trying to be like San Francisco. You know, in the New York Times article, uh, Oakland, Brooklyn by the day. Oh, I can't uh, stand that. I, yeah. It, oh, God. I'm sorry, Ali. That gives me the heebie-jeebies every time I hear it. Ugh. <laughs> right, right. But that's sort of what I think Jerry Brown's legacy was, was creating this sense that we were... Uh, a, a mirror of, of uh, San Francisco. I always like to we're different. I'm, I've always felt much more comfortable in Oakland because I felt that it was more of a, a real place to live rather than just glitz of light and, and truth. Yeah, now Barry Lee has another question. He says, uh, oh, actually, John Marks has one. John says, I asked Mr. L.U. Harris if he remembers me at the 1995 meeting of the Raiders return to Oakland. I was the guy with a black t-shirt with white lettering that says Al Davis, you know, doesn't do something appropriate. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember him, but I remember the t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Do you hear that, John? You remember the t-shirt. So I, 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 I'm mostly always mindful of the fact that I have an audience that ranges from 15 years old to 60. So uh, mm. <laughs> it's always that sanitized that. Uh, we're with... Yeah. <laughs> we're former... Former Oakland mayor, former California assemblyman, and former Peralta Community College uh, District Board uh, Chairman Ella and Chancellor Elihu Harris on Zenny 62 Live right now. And as we close out, because I'm going to keep you on for an hour, because now you got things to do and you want to get to some, some sleep. But uh, I got to ask, if you, what's your advice to the current mayor and how she should handle this situation? And I say that for a very pointed reason. She needs. Has, has Libby called you? Uh, no, she's never called me. All right, so Libby... Well, she called me when she was running. I'm not... I'll be fair. She called me when she was running. Okay, well, she's running again. And she, if she if she mm-hmm. has any inkling of, of of chutzpah, she should call you again. But in the in the event she does not, or to wet her whistle to do so, what is your advice to her in how she should handle the A's situation? And I might add the Raiders situation, because Raiders may want to come back. Well, yeah, I think, first of all, you have to leave every contingency uh, you can open. Um, but I think if the Raiders leave town, uh, I don't think you sit there and wait uh, on them coming back. Uh, I think that was a decision that was made. I think that, that, that's left the game. If they leave, they're gone. Uh, if they come back, they're going to have to move to the suburbs. There's not going to be any more urban land to do this with. So I, I think in that regard, uh, they need to think carefully about what they're doing. Because I do think that it's a mistake. And I think once they, in that mistake, once made, I think it's going to be not only detrimental, but actually very, very, it, 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 it's going to be, I think it may, it may in fact define the future of, uh, of, of the Raiders in a very detrimental way. And I think it's not going to be able to correct it. I mean, they may be have something else they can go. I don't think it's Las Vegas. And I don't know that once they get into a long term lease, but let's go after the 49. They moved to Levi's Stadium. Tickets went on sale today for $20. Family of four, two years ago, paid $631 to go to the, the, the 49er game. Tonight, tickets are $20. So if you, could, you could buy tickets yesterday for $14. It cost $60 to park. So <laughs> you could buy four tickets, and it, you could stay in your car. <laughs> That's outrageous. I, I, is pro football pricing itself out of existence? Well, when you when you don't have a winner, I mean they got a shiny new stadium, state of the art, 
It was bragged apart. It's got everything a football can want, except a winning team. Yeah, that's true. And yet we have the Coliseum, which was mm. filled to the brim, Marshawn Lynch mm. dancing, something I don't think you're right. ever going to see happen right. in Las Vegas. And mm. yet I feel like this crown jewel is not getting the love in terms of a proper renovation that it deserves. Should we just, I mean, I know you mentioned higher and better uses, but what about that, that, what about why not taking one last Hail Mary shot at getting the Raiders back? You know, just going balls out, as they say, and, you know, defying, you know, defying I, logic. I, I, I compare, I compare it, uh, if, if, if your wife or husband wants to leave you, at some point you got to make a decision as to whether or not, again, is the juice worth the street? It's just not. I mean, you, you, you the, the Raiders are, are, are business. They know what they got here. They know what their fan base here. They know that they're loved here. If you want to leave the, the person, the, the, the fans that love you for some unknown future, that's a risk that you got to take. And if we can't stop you from taking it, bye. <laughs> you know, at some point, at some point, you have to have enough, the fans got to have enough pride. We love this team. We don't own this team. And as a result of owning this team, we got limited options. And we're going to sit around chasing uh, 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 Mark Davis or uh, uh, anybody else. Mm -hmm. It seems if they want to leave and they have the legal right to leave. What are you going to do? You have to be following them down the street crying, please come back? <laughs> It seems like they want to stay oh, because to do that. they're they're begging for an extra year now. They they want twenty nineteen. Yeah, but that's not because they love us. That's because they can't get a stadium built in Vegas. <laughs> but isn't that like? Now, you got. That, huh? I was gonna say, isn't that a great position for us to be in? Like, oh, they're bleeding, and you know, for a year. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, maybe it should be. I don't want to be a good business for a year. I want I want to say, look, you make up your mind. If you go in and you go on, hey, we got to make other plans for the future. I'll fit you without you. That's your decision. You decide you want to leave me, hey, God bless you. I hope you do well. But, you know, <laughs> hey, as far as I'm concerned, you don't live here anymore. <laughs> John Marks asks, he says, uh, ask Mr. Harris, can a court injunction stop the Oakland Raiders move to Las Vegas? For sure, yeah. a, court, a court injunction can go with anything. You're not likely to get one. Uh, the one thing I was really interested in was whether or not you could sue uh, the, uh, the league as other cities have done and settle, like Cleveland, mm -hmm. to keep the name Oakland Raiders. Mm -hmm. that, I'd love to be able to do that. I mean, I think Oakland and the Raiders are synonymous. And, and we fought too hard uh, to establish this franchise uh, in mean years and, 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 and years where there really was a genuine love affair between uh, the team and the city, not a one way love affair uh, with uh, the uh, you know with, with, with the team with the uh, team uh, that from the play, from the fans, but not reciprocated by the ownership. Um, and, and I think that's really an unfortunate reality. Uh, I mean, I grew up loving the Raiders. I went to Frank Hill Field as a kid, and really kind of believe that the, the, the Raiders would never ever actually ever ever leave Oakland. Uh, and when they and when they went to L.A. And I was born in L.A. It broke my heart. But, you know, hey, I got over it. Mm -hmm. And and then they came back. I ain't getting my heart broken two or three times. You know? Yeah. Not that desperate for love. Hey, uh, how would you respond to, well, my idea was that it would be less, it would be harder to argue for the brand and colors because the Raiders, the Oakland Raiders went to L.A. Am I wrong about that? No, not really. I mean, they left and they came back. I mean, just come out of court and you make your argument uh, that the Raiders, uh, are, uh, they, they left, uh, but they really, over the years, they've always been, uh, and I think you always make the argument, the Oakland Raiders. Even when they were in L.A., a lot of people still call them the Oakland Raiders and refuse to change the name. Um, they, even though they were in, in Los Angeles, they never really established themselves as a Los Angeles team. Uh, people in L.A., when they left, they didn't care. Bye. That's true. Go back to Oakland. That's true. You know? Yeah. And, and, and now they got two other teams. They ain't going to Vegas to see the Raiders. No. And they ain't going to see the Raiders when they were in L.A. Why would they go to Vegas to see the Raiders? <laughs> Even the L.A. You know, mayor I mean, said that he was sorry that there were two 
two LA teams, and it should have just been the Rams. He said that I think a few days ago, which I thought was. No, was he's right. You know? Look, there's not enough of a big enough fan base in Los Angeles for two teams. No, there isn't. There's too many other things. There's too many other things to do in Los Angeles. And who wants to go through that traffic to get to Coliseum? Or where, or, or, or I guess assume Hollywood Park. Mm-hmm. You know, I just think that it was a, a bad business decision to put two teams there, maybe even one team. And, and, and think you got great college teams, mm-hmm. but there are a whole lot of people they'll never go for the pro sports because they like USC and UCLA. That's right. That's right. Hey, uh, John Marks has a question. He says, why is it hard to get in an injunction? And, and not, man, it may not be that hard. We just don't know. Oh, I get and you. I, think, yeah. I think you have to examine okay. um, the, the, the issue. And from a legal standpoint, can you make the case, as Cleveland did, and ultimately settled with the ownership, that this is a team that really, for years, in that case, literally decades, was known simply as a team for now. So uh, I don't think simply uh, uh, say that, okay, well, the name has changed. Protect the if they can move. Well, yeah, you can, but you're not, you're not going to take the you're not going to take the, the, the name with you. That's our name. You know that name was was, was brought into uh, uh, Cleveland, and you know you, you can leave, but you got to leave the name behind. Well, hey, before you go, I want everybody to know where the name Uptown came from. Can you give my viewers some Oakland history? Well, I mean, I don't know the Oakland history. I can tell you that the whole day of Uptown was sure. that we wanted to create an Uptown entertainment district. We talked about one time about having uh, not only Fox here, uh, just that ultimately happened. We bought the Fox uh, for Mr. Lukey uh, back in the uh, early 90s uh, to the point where we were going to renovate the Fox. We were going to create a movie theater, uh, a multiplex movie theater, and try to create um, a, 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 a 9 10 downtown where people came uh, downtown at 9 o'clock in the morning and stayed until 10 o'clock at night with the retail, with shopping, and all the other things that went with it. Uh, anyway, as a result of that, uh, Uptown was going to be an entertainment and retail district, and we just never were able to pull all of that uh, together. And then Jerry Brown made the decision that he was going to basically do housing uh, at Uptown, and that became sort of the, the, the real uh, uh, objective. And, uh, and that's what happened. What happened to Dave Alexander? Because I remember when I first worked for you, my mm-hmm. first official meetings was, was with you, Dave Alexander, Kofi mm-hmm. Bonner, and uh, mm-hmm. Denise. Who, uh, I, I, actually, I went to school, Urban Planet. I went to Berkeley with Kofi mm-hmm. and Denise, which is kind of an interesting right. you know, place right. to be in. Right. <laughs> what happened mm-hmm. to uh, Dave Alexander, the developer who came from Arkansas, right? Oh, that was Dave Alexander. Dave Alexander actually became the uh, uh, general counsel for the port. Okay, uh, right, 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 right. The, the, yeah, I, I'm not sure about who who uh, uh, was the developer from Arkansas. Uh, that um, my mind is, is not not there right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, I do know that uh, we actually the developers. We, what I initially was doing was was with the developers from. Uh, Massachusetts, uh, Roush. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and Michael Spear. Right, Michael Spear. The Michael mm-hmm. Spear died the plane crash, the mm-hmm. whole ball of wax fell apart. Wow, wow. But uh, but that that to me was one of the, the saddest developments in terms of the development of the uh, of the downtown. We had a commitment to build an incredible ball uh, for uh, and, and, sh- and and everything else downtown. Mike Spear died. The commitment died, and it never happened. Yeah, and I remember the subsidy went up to something like, or the, the requested subsidy went up to, uh, I think when all said and done, right. $93 million or something like that. Right, right, and, right, right, right. Yeah, but it was a real example of where, you know, one, one person uh, who had faith in, in, in Oakland who was going to build a huge uh, shopping mall, uh, his untimely death uh, resulted, I think, in, uh, uh, in, in, a, in a major shift in terms of Oakland's the future, and certainly as a, a regional uh, downtown. Uh, it, now, I, I don't really have the land to build any kind of regional shopping center, uh, but I do think that uh, with downtown housing, if we can create enough entertainment being used uh, downtown, we can still have a downtown that's going to be vibrant 
but not like L.A. Yeah, I mean, L.A. had, remember, L.A. thinks you didn't have a downtown, so they created L.A. Live. Right. So uh, our venue may actually have to be in a place like the um, Coliseum area. We may not have a downtown that would be what we had envisioned years ago, and that's unfortunate, but, you know, that's uh, something you got to move on. i got to ask this question since we're talking about mm -hmm. urban development downtown. The homeless problem, is it, I mean, to me it's solvable. Is it solvable to you? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's solvable, but it's certainly we do better than we do it. I mean, what you got to have downtown, and I started this, but let me tell you a real quick story. When I became mayor uh, within a month or so, uh, I went over to Half Moon Bay uh, on a Friday afternoon just for a weekend, just for a couple of days. And uh, I left about 4.45 on a Friday. I got to Half Moon Bay maybe about 6 o'clock or so. Uh, I get to Half Moon Bay, turn on the TV, and they're asking, where's the mayor? because the homeless had taken over the uh, uh, library uh, in downtown. And, uh, and and I was watching on TV, saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> um, and, and, I said, and I'm getting ready to get back to Austin. Uh, <laughs> but out of that uh, that takeover, uh, as you may, we created a one-stop homeless uh, center uh, in downtown. And, and for years, that became a place where people were homeless to get a shower, to get, uh, you know, uh, temporary housing, could get uh, uh, social services, uh, uh, emergency shelter, whatever it might be. That, to me, is what we need to repeat. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. I think what you want to do is say, look, we want to have a one-stop where people can go get information and get options. Then I think you'd really be more realistic about saying, look, you know, we can't have people taking over uh, areas where there's going to be filth, uh, there's going to be vermin, uh, there's going to be a really unhealthy environment for children as well as the homeless themselves. If there were people that would like to be nasty, uh, I don't think that's true. I think we have an obligation as a society to provide services and certainly not just uh, kick people off the curb because they're poor. But I do think that we have a right as a society to say, look, we're going to provide an alternative. You, you can't just sleep anywhere doing anything simply because you're homeless. Uh, it's got to be, uh, again, a two-way street where we have responsibility, but we also have options. So that we're going to ask people to be responsible, but we're also going to make sure they know that they have other choices in terms of how they live and where they go. And that's a great place to uh, start time-wise, stop time-wise from where we began, because I know we could talk forever, but I know you don't have that kind of time. <laughs> and... Uh, Look forward to having you back, boss. Uh, listen, uh, I, I'm glad people are interested in what goes on uh, in Oakland. Uh, I still think Oakland's an incredible city. Uh, but what makes Oakland so great to me is the people who live there. Uh, the fact that they care, that they're willing to engage and willing to uh, communicate uh, about the city and the issues that face it. And as long as you're willing to talk about things, uh, then there's options for, uh, for positive change, options for improvement and, and, and resolution of conflict. So as long as people are talking, we don't have an issue. When people stop talking, we got problems. And uh, I'm gonna, I've got about like 15 more questions I want to ask you, but I'm going to save it for another time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, listen, you, you have a great evening, and, and I'm glad that people are listening to City Live because I know you've got a lot of perspective, and I know that you're willing to fight for the things that are important to you, and you demonstrate some of the best things about open. Oh, thanks. You know, what I, what I like about this is that I now can say I've come to a point in life where I'm, I know a lot of people who've done a lot of things, and particularly in Oakland, and I want to make this – place that media mm -hmm. center where people can come away saying I feel like I know Oakland more now than I did mm -hmm. you know an hour ago and you certainly are a, a contribute a contributor to that objective of mine no, I appreciate you know? it. Oh. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, Oakland is a great city I told people appreciate it you know I remember when I was, I was campaigning uh, once I, I was talking to a lady who lived over off Piedmont Avenue and um, and, and, I, and I said you know I was running for mayor and I was just me. She said, I love Oakland. She had a little small baby, like a eight, nine month old baby in her arms. She said, I just hope I could soon stay here. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, I said, wow, that's my responsibility. That's the burden that I have wanting to be the mayor, is I've got to make sure that she can stay here. Hey, well said. You sure you're not going to run again? All right. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
<laughs> been there, done that, but I still love the city, and I'm willing to fight with anybody else who wants to make sure Oakland is all that it can be. All right. We'll be back to talk to you, boss. All right. You take care. Have a great evening. You too. I'll see you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Well, folks, that was, uh, once again, another great conversation, uh, an hour, with my friend and boss, I always call him boss because I learned so much about from, from him over the years, uh, Elgin Harris. And uh, I got most of the conversations in. The question about the NHL team, I believe, is one that is a good one, but I can say the city is not pursuing that right now. It's a great idea. Okay, and I know that's something that Elihu didn't know about, so I wasn't going to park that in there because he has such a rich history that I've only, that it's very valuable for people who are new to Oakland or maybe forgot some things about our history or have never been to Oakland to hear about, and I've only scratched the surface of what he knows and remembers about about our city because he's again he's been you know resident business owner a california assembly person youngest elected for some time then mayor of oakland two time two term mayor of oakland and he decided not to run for a third term he could have but jerry brown stepped forward and ran and then he was Across the community college district chancellor they recruited him they actually pursued him to be the chancellor and then he went to cons- you know, consulting and business owning and relaxing you know but he's done a lot and i've said it before and i'll say it again it is a mistake for oakland mayor libby shaft to not call on elihu and among in addition to other mayor former mayors of oakland and form a kind of a cabinet and ask for advice. You know, maybe you know, pay him a stipend. Don't just sit him down there for free and just say, oh, we'll feed you. You know, pay him a little stipend. Make the effort to let them know that as the current mayor of Oakland, you value their opinion because they don't get that. So anyway, um, Barry Lee says, Zinni, what do you think the city needs to upgrade the Coliseum from future earthquakes or marketing perspective, do you sell or lease it? Well, that's you. You asked, hey Patrick Blackman, how you doing? And you asked two questions in one sentence, and I'll I'll get it. I'll take it like this. Okay, first of all, and to repeat very least question, Zinni, what do you think would take the city? Would the city would need to upgrade the Coliseum from future earthquakes from marketing perspective to either sell or lease it? Well, first of all, the Coliseum doesn't have an earthquake problem. I remind you that it's not only survived the Loma Prieta earthquake, yeah, it survived it. It did so. Now, the Loma Prieta earthquake was, you know, it hit us in 1989 on, um, it was October uh, 4th, I believe it was. No, no, yeah, October 4th, 1989, if memory serves, at 5.04 in the afternoon. And we're in the middle of the World Series. The first and to this date only in Bay Area bridge to bridge World Series pitting the Oakland Athletics and the San Francisco Giants. The A's swept the Giants, but most notably, the Coliseum came through unscathed. Not a crack, nothing. Okay? Nothing. And I bring that up, everyone, every time someone wants to diss the Coliseum or trash the stadium, I always say, but you know what? It survived a 6.9 on the Richter scale earthquake. Again, 6.9, okay? Something to be said about that. Now, so do I think it needs to be, something needs to be done from a marketing perspective? No, I, I don't. I firmly believe that what the Coliseum needs is a plan to upgrade, to expand it to 65,000 seats for some type of large-scale event, ideally professional football, with 300 suites, but make it and a retractable roof. Yeah, I said it. Why? Because that allows us to go after big-ticket events. 
We've had tons of concerts here. We used to have Day on the Green. We had the Rolling Stone give a Bafo 1997 concert outdoors under a full moon. I know I was there 10 yards of Mick Jagger. It was awesome. We can still have that today. But why retractable roof? Because in today's event industry environment, retractable roof stadiums produce a or allow for a more controlled environment than their outdoor comparables. That's what you want to pitch. We need that. We need that. I've even said I'd like to have an artist rendition of what the Raiders Las Vegas stadium design would look like at the Coliseum in Oakland. I still want that. And I'm going to have to make a crude drawing because no one else has done it. But my point is, I think that'll be a hit. Now, Patrick and Blackman asks, what is it about Oakland that, that is making teams leave? They have a TV market. Well, let's take it from the top. You have, first of all, Joe Lacob said to me, in fact, you know what? I'll play, I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to play my interview with Joe Lacob, and you can hear, you know, hear him talk about it himself. One, one moment, please. Joe Lacob. Joe Lacob is in E62. Boom. And there it is, okay? And here you can hear Joe Lacob himself talk about it. One moment, please. <laughs> Take your time. Focus on the equation. You're going to do great. I love you so much. He really came after us pretty aggressively. I mean, we certainly were having conversations. It's an election, right? Yeah. We're having conversations, certainly, with everybody. Yeah. And we're looking into all options. But he really came after us aggressively and his staff. Some of the people, Jen Matz, was very involved in this. And I have to give them a lot of credit for being great visionaries and uh, being entrepreneurs. Hey, Joe, I have to ask, how much of this is a criticism of the JPN Coliseum as a guy who worked for the Coliseum? I mean, what... This they started this from the Oakland there, there's no, no, there's no criticisms. Okay. I mean, okay. clearly the previous ownership of the Warriors, not us, right. had issues that we all know in the courts with the JPA. Um, we, when we came in, we did what we should do, which is settle all that. We wanted to have a clean slate, and we did that. Right. And we have a very good, I feel, a good working relationship with them. I do think it's it's not the easiest. It's a public venue. We don't have control of the venue. Um, it's not the easiest thing to manage, and it's an old building, and there are a lot of problems. Um, but that has really nothing to do with this. At the end of the day, we really looked everywhere. We said, where is the single best place that we're going to invest a lot of money? And in San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, wherever you are, California, pretty much... We knew it had to be, you know, privately financed. Right. If we're going to write a check, if we're going to do that, we had to pick what was the best place for our fans, the best place for investors, best place for everybody. But Oaklanders are going to wonder, was Oakland aggressive enough in keeping you guys? Well, I don't want to get in trouble with, with Mayor Kwan. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I think they're challenged because they have three teams that they're dealing with. And, you know, in all fairness, I'm being empathetic here. Yeah, I understand. They have yeah, a difficult situation. And, uh, you know, it's not like they can go build three stadiums that doesn't happen anymore uh in this day and age so and with our redevelopment because redevelopment's killed redevelopment now, money's went away you know. it's a difficult situation right, right and i think that you know they will be successful i'm sure at uh um, keeping some one at least one of those franchises and they need to focus and work real hard that. we just felt for us you know we're the first shoe to drop i guess you right, could say right but it just felt for us we had to make an objective independent decision that was the best thing for us long term i think if you come here Oh, you beautiful. look at this, Absolutely. and you get approached by San Francisco in a way that was so aggressive, so entrepreneurial, so positive. It's kind of a hard package what's, to beat. What's the total price tag for this? Well, we don't know the exact price tag yet, but it's six hundred million, million maybe. Ballpark, certainly right five hundred million or more. Yeah. yeah. Are you at all concerned with litigation from over? I'm not going to comment on anything. Gotcha. Like gotcha. Well, how great is it to to make this announcement as well as the D League team is moving to San Francisco? Yes, it is. It, uh, and we're very excited about that. Uh, it, it sort of expands our footprint in the Bay Area. I think Santa Cruz is going to be an outstanding location for the D-League. I mean, having someone who spent some time down there over the years, I think it really, really is going to be great for that community. 
and I know they're very excited down there to have it. And uh, all our players and our coaching staff are excited because we'll be able to drive back and forth either Oakland in the next five years and certainly later from San Francisco. Um, it's, it's just a great thing. We, we can develop those players and, and be in, in close proximity. What are the cities you look at? What are the cities you look at for uh, for the, uh, the the arena in the Bay Area? Was it just the Bay Area? Or? For uh, for the Warriors? Yeah, to move out of Oakland. I mean, which other cities well, you look at? Well, we weren't at? looking to move out of Oakland. We certainly spent a lot of time thinking about Oakland and, and looking there, and we spent a lot of time in San Francisco. Uh, we considered San Jose, though did not pursue it aggressively, in all honesty. Uh, we just felt, you know, I didn't want to be disingenuous. We didn't want to be disingenuous and do something that really probably wasn't going to work for us. We felt that we looked at where the majority of our fan base comes from, the majority of our fan base, and they really evenly split between the East Bay and the West Bay. And we just felt that we needed a place that everyone could get to. There was great public transportation. Um, and, you know, look, the, the bridge is right there. You can drive right over from the East Bay. We've done it multiple times. You can take BART in from the East Bay. It's, a, it's actually, you can get there quicker from some parts of the East Bay than you can to the Coliseum site. And there's the idea that there's not parking around here is not true. There's 16,000 spaces within a 20-minute walk. We've commissioned a study on that. There's all kinds of the financial district and all the parking is walking distance. You can try it yourself. The Transbay Terminal is going to be in in the same year we're opening this arena in 2017, and it's the largest transit hub in the Western United States. Muni, BART, the expansion over there. Uh, I mean, to, everything. To, to it's all there. The ferry Jewish. comes right to this site. You yeah. can't beat this site. Joe, was this? So there you go. That's that was uh, that was Joe Lake. Of, now, what's interesting about about what he said and what he talked about is that well, there was also I think you guys got your answer, all right. And the answer basically is that Oakland did not put up a fight, okay. And he, he said it. Joe Lake said it. Challenge. You heard him say it right there. On, on the video, and that was this was the date was May twenty third, two thousand twelve, when I conducted that interview with Joe Lake of the Warriors owner, and he said then that that San Francisco under then new mayor Ed Lee pursued them aggressively, and basically you know, detailed words aside, Oakland did not, and that was what it was. I, I'm going to double down on what he said. I remember Jean Kwan, who was mayor at the time of Oakland, said to me that she did not, she, she didn't get how important the Warriors were to people. I'm not kidding you. She said that, okay? Now, of course, if you bring that back to her today, she'll deny, remember, she'll say she doesn't remember saying that. But she said it. And I heard it. And I repeated that. She made a mistake. Now, she tried to make up for it with her involvement in the formation of Coliseum City and its development, right? But the simple fact of the matter is, and Joe Lacob said it, and also said he didn't want to get in trouble with Mayor Kwan, was that, hey, look, Oakland has challenges. And that's how he put it, okay? So, and... Barry Lee, Corbett says Oakland might end up with no teams. Yeah, that could happen because we, well, we went from three, we're down to two, and we're looking at one. And if this one thing doesn't work out, I still believe that the A's are, you know, designing a path for relocation. The question is where? Um, Las Vegas? But, and that could happen, the Corvette. Barry Lee says, or asks whether, is that the spot where the new arena is being built? No, that's Pier 32 where the Warriors region, arena, the Warriors originally wanted their arena to be built, but they came up against so much environmental opposition that uh, the project was on its last legs until Salesforce founder and CEO Mark Benioff called Joe Lake up and said, hey, look, I've got some land here next to Children's Hospital and I'm willing to, you know, offer it to you for a nice little deal. And that's what got the ball rolling for what will be Chase Center. So there you go. And Patrick and Blackman says it seems as if the city is calling the Raiders bluff. Uh, how do you mean, Patrick? Uh, I don't know that we're. I don't. I don't know what you mean by that in terms of the lease deal. 
Well, they're going to get an extension. Yeah, they are really going to get an extension. And so, in terms of 2019, I think I'm going to bet for 2020. All right. I really am going to bet for 2020 that that deal you know, comes through. Now, it it's at this point in time before I close, I always ask for people to invest. Uh, and there it is, okay? Uh, if you like this content and like what I'm doing, invest. Now, tomorrow, no Zenny 62 live, and I'm traveling back to the Bay Area. I will resume Zenny 62 live activities officially on the normal time on Sunday, and although I may do a live stream on Saturday, okay? Uh, I will definitely do videos from the Cal game. We're playing USC at 12.30. So uh, you have a good night. And uh, and everybody, remember, thank you very, very much uh, for your help, your investment. And I, I'm going to get your shares out tonight as well. Patrick and Blackman says because they're moving slow in the stadium issue. Oh, oh I, I see. Uh, you mean Vegas is moving slow? That's interesting. Let me... Send me an email about that because I don't know that the question is properly formed for the answer I want to give, okay? Um, and you said Oakland is moving slow on the stadium issue. That is a long conversation, a long one, a very long one. I will say that it has a lot to do with a certain current lack of understanding of how the levers of government can be pulled to make something happen on the part of our collective set of elected officials. No, I did not call out when I said the collective set. We have a staff that I believe is governed by what I call analysis paralysis. They analyze things too much, and when they do analyze, it's always done the wrong way. Just saying. They're not proactive. All right. Please email me. All right. And folks, please invest in Zenny 62 Please. Thank you all so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Even if it's a cup of coffee, it's meaningful to the future of Zenny 62 Live. Thank you so much. See you. See you Sunday, if not before.